I guess I shouldn't worry about mock drafts and uh, team baseball. <laughs> oh. Oh Two my more God. teams that aren't making the playoffs here in Rebuild City, baby. Okay, how about um, Marvin Jones Jr.? How do you like that signing? I like it for one year. I mean, he was pretty. I mean, he was pretty good playing for Jacksonville. I yeah. mean, we know he was good here, and yeah, maybe they'll still draft a wide receiver. I don't know. Well, what do you think? I, I mean, I hate to do this because we make fun of people talking about mock drafts 24 hours a day. I, I don't know how you don't go insane with all the draft talk, but who do you like the Lions to pick in the first uh, at number six or, or even at the 18 spot? I would, I, if he's there, I would, unless, Jay see, we're Carter. at this point, which is hard to believe that we actually believe and trust the Lions management. So <laughs> if they don't take Jalen Carter, I think there's a legitimate reason that they know why they didn't. Converse, if they take him, they've checked out all the questions about him and character issues, and they decided to take him. That's talent-wise, that's who I would take if he's there. If he's not there, there are a lot of ways they can go. The Tyree Wilson kid from Texas Tech mm-hmm. is really good. And I wouldn't even be opposed if they go – and, and bulk up even their strength with an offensive lineman, Skronsky. I don't want a quarterback at six. I, I don't Thomas either. Good, he's not great, but he's good enough. And you just want to build on what you already have in the trenches. And at 18, either a wide receiver or, or if one of the good cornerbacks are there, I would take one at 18. No, yeah. Uh, how sick are you of talking about the draft? Because, I, honestly, I listen to – a lot of 97.1, the different shows, and it seems like you almost have to do it or the, the, the people listening will, will have your heads. Pretty, I wouldn't say have our heads, but yeah, because and that's part of it because of our the rest of our teams. I mean, you can't sit there and talk about the Pistons or the Red Wings. No. Really, I mean, the Red Wings teased us for a little bit, but there's no, as, as I've learned to, in all the freaking decades doing this, except for the Lions and Michigan football, Unless a team is, you know, doing really well, after a while when they stink, nobody wants to talk about them unless there's an issue. And you're not going to sit there, you know, me and John. Hey, Stoney and Jansen, 623. Pistons lose again by 17. Why didn't you know why? <laughs> nobody wants to hear that. I mean, that's boring. And so, yes, I think we do overdo the uh, the NFL stuff. But NFL is king. Got to play the hiss. It. No, and it's it- kind of for the first time to have a team in so long that people really care yeah, about so much hype around this team good i do i i really like this team i was so excited for them last year even when they'd only just won a couple in a row i'm like oh i really want this team to win they were more or less out of it but i just like the the guys i like the coach i didn't know if he was a great coach or not but i was pulling for him 110 percent, which i haven't done that in a while and this seems like it's the, been like the biggest free agency in my in my life, like I don't remember the uh, Lions yeah. ever grabbing this many guys and having such a great free agency grade. Right. Yeah. The last time seemed to be like when uh, Jim Schwartz went to like Kyle Vandenbosch's driveway <laughs> and he signed Nick Ferguson the same <laughs> one. And, but the, these guys, they're not superstars, but they're really good players that you that they need. They they fill the need with good players that aren't going to kill them uh, cap wise. And they're young. Yes, and they they look like they actually know what they're doing. Um, and it, this has been, I assume, this has been great for 97.1. I saw the, I think I saw the fall book, and I know you guys had a fantastic fall book. Is it carrying on through the draft? So far, I mean, the last I've heard, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not privy to like the week, week by weeks, but yeah, you know, things are really good. All, all the shows, I know, our shows ratings have been, it's the best they've, they've ever been. Uh, no matter, you know, it was McAllister, or, you know, unfortunately with Jamie and, 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 and but with me and John. Um, I think, you know, they love having a former player. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think a guy's guy and a Michigan guy, say what you want about, you know, Michigan, you know, gets too much. Uh, it says something. I mean, we had this tournament that we did, like a bracket game on Twitter, basically. <laughs> Not like the old me and Mojo stuff, but we think, what was your best and your favorite or whatever NCAA tournament moment since 1981? And today, I I wasn't working, but I, was, I, I, I saw it on Twitter. The... Trey Burke shot that put Michigan oh, oh, come into on. the elite eight in what uh, 2013. <laughs> wow! On over Jimmy Valve at the NC State game. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah, I can think so, of a lot. So the finals is going to be that Trey Burke versus Christian Leitner's unbelievable play. And if really? Trey Burke wins, 
than the home. You know, yes, we are a provincial town. Well, it's, it's a, Michigan is a cult, but it's a very big cult, and it would be silly it's to ignore the cult. And, and, and for football, I'm part of it. And uh, by the way, we're recruiting is doing pretty damn good, which I was a little down on that for a while. But I guess they're supposed to hear from this Jaden Davis quarterback either today or tomorrow. And oh boy, all indications are. I mean, Harbaugh didn't look too nervous yesterday. That's yeah. crazy. No, he just wanted to know why he wasn't going to play downbound train. <laughs> <laughs> is he that big a Springsteen fan? Is he a serious Springsteen fan? He says he's seen him, you know, I think double, you know, anytime five or more. Oh, I amateur. Think. Yeah, he's amateur. Nothing. <laughs> he's a poser. <laughs> hey, back to Lions football briefly. Do you know Barbara? Who calls into the show? Oh, Barbara. Barbara. Who, Bar- do you have a, do you know have a call? Do you, is there a caller you know of or aware of that calls 97.1 a lot named Barbara? <laughs> no. She, she Can sounds, you play some audio over, Brandon? Not, sounds like a talking oak tree, kind of. Oh, no, she's great. Here she is. Barbara. Barbara. He's still not the quarterback. I don't care what anybody says. We get a kick out of every one of her calls to 97.1, and <laughs> she's just a gem. I think our defense is slightly better than last year. Yeah, people have started sending us Barbara calls from 97.1 to us because we wow. we happened to hear one call and Mark thought it was funny and so we it's listened back to it. And <laughs> she's well, one, I think she I think because she had to you know she's probably you know I don't want to defame her but she's probably not up at, between the hours of six and ten. No, I don't think. <laughs> but, but if she does call, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll remember her now. And she's she's a, a big love. She's a big weekend caller, I think. Oh. 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 She's got a crush on Caputo. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? Hey, Stoney, um, listen, thanks a lot for calling in.